Hi guys, Simon Gregory here, and I'm just going to take you through a brief track walkthrough of my remix for Sunshine in Human Form, which is out now on Mondo Records. Okay, um, so let's get into it. Um, this is the project file for my remix for Sunshine in Human Form. Um, so we'll start at the top, um, just start with the kicks. Um, so you'll see here I've got a, uh, a group here, uh, which is grouping together a few channels for kicks. Um, so the ones in green are the uh, effectively the intro uh, kicks. This is just a bit of ear candy here. Um, so looking at this, it's just being used sort of as a percussive element really to, uh, to add a bit of a, a, an, extra, a, a, an extra ear candy to the, uh, to the introduction of the track. Um, so looking at this, it's a uh, sample actually that was provided to me from nitrous oxide. Uh, really, really nice rounded uh, vintage kick. Uh, I'm using a saturator here just to add a bit of uh, grip and drive to it. Um, rolling off all of the lows, uh, and you can see here I've got quite an aggressive EQ actually. Uh, again, rolling off the, uh, the lows, quite a heavy steep roll off there and rolling off all the highs. Uh, so for solo that, you can hear what it is. Okay, uh, and then uh, further on, I've got uh, the same kick sample being used, uh, just as the uh, the, the uh, build to the drop. Um, so again, uh, similar processing, but uh, less of an aggressive EQ here. Uh, just using the auto filter to uh, to roll off the lows, uh, so I'll solo that. And you can see on the uh, the group here, I'm using a tool called Kickbox, uh, which is a really fantastic tool. Actually, it's actually it's actually a compressor, um, but it's got various tools in here to uh, help you really shape a kick. Uh, and it can really be really quite good uh, transforming a kick that doesn't have it doesn't quite have it. Um, so um, yeah, so you can add some warmth to the kick, uh, various frequencies, uh, cut out some of the mud from it uh, or the boxiness, um, and you can use it to attenuate the click. Um, I really really recommend this tool. Actually, it's a really really good tool. Uh, it can really transform a a, a lacklustre kick. Um, it doesn't work with everything. Um, so um, you know, uh, use it use it uh, on a, an ad hoc basis. But um, yeah, I, I found it to be uh, a bit of a go-to tool just to, uh, to to give my kicks that that extra presence. Um, so moving on, uh, just to the the main kicks here. So um, we've got the beefy kick here which is actually the same sample again um so um, again with another kick box slightly different processing here um so i've got a bit of a boost around 100 hertz just to uh, to, to boost the body of the kick um and uh, a slight boost at the top end uh just to bring out the click um and um similarly uh i'm adding a little bit of warmth at 90 hertz taking out some of the boxiness around 320 hertz which is more muddy uh, in this particular sample um, and it's quite an aggressive cue uh, and then adding a bit more click here uh, just a bit of a boost at 1.5 okay so i'll just play that uh Okay, um, a bit later on as well, you'll see I've got a, a second layer there, uh, which is actually a, um, a snare. Um, so this is just there to help uh, cut through the, uh, the the mix in the drop, um, and it's just a it's a very simple snare, um, uh, really 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 short actually. Uh, I've cut most of it away. Um, I've cut a lot away from the EQ here. Um, and it just adds a, a, an extra transient to the kick just to help it all punch through. So if I solo that and play that. Really, really subtle effect. But added together, uh, it, it really helps it cut through. 
Okay, so uh, moving on to the percussive elements. Um, so there's uh, a few few layers here. Um, so uh, I'll just run through these. Now, I apologise for the messiness of my project. Uh, I do tend to make things as I go along and then just munge them all together. Um, so I'll try and make sense of it where I can. Um, so we've got a few elements here. Uh, your typical rolling hat, which is just a, a short hat. Um, really, really short actually, um, and uh, I've just done a bit of a fade out, transposed it up a little bit, uh, cut out all of the, uh, the the lows. I only want the uh, the, the very high bit, uh, and uh, a bit of ducking here, uh, just to give it some rhythm. Um, so I'll solo that. Then we have a typical open hat. Similar processing again, um, so uh, all of the uh, the lows have been cut, um, not quite as aggressively, but uh, taking out all this information down here that we don't need. Uh, and then we've got some extra hats. So we've got a reverse hat here, um, which just adds some uh, some um, extra ear candy. Uh, and then we've got another layered hat here. Okay, and then moving on, we've got the snares. Uh, now there are two snares, um, and on the group here, I'm using a glue compressor, uh, just a stock plug-in from uh, for, from the Ableton uh, Live uh, suite. Um, so a, a bit of um, quite aggressive, um, and just a bit of makeup gain because obviously when I add the, uh, the the compression, it reduces the volume ever so slightly. So I'm just using a bit of makeup gain just to boost it back up again. Um, cutting off the uh, the lows here. Uh, and boosting a bit at the highs uh, and just using a transient shaper which is actually from uh, the Killer Hearts um, suite um, you might recognize it for, uh, as one of the effects that comes with phase plant um, but they do allow you to use them separately um, which is quite cool um, so very very light I've just changed the sustain here and just added a very very slight amount of pump uh, just to help the transients cut through um, two samples so we've got the, uh, the top layer uh, which is the brighter layer of the snare. Um, EQ wires again have cut a lot of the uh, the lows away, um, and a slight cut here uh, just to, uh, to 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 get rid of some of the uh, the harsher sounds of the uh, the snare. Bit of width, um, so I'm using utility plug in here uh, just to create some width. Uh, now you notice sometimes I use the delay plug in for width, um, but that can be quite aggressive. Um, so this is just a more subtle effect. And then finally, I've got a shaper box, um, and I'm using this effectively to control the tail of the uh, the snare. So if I uh, I solo this, you can see what I see what's going on. And it's just controlling the, uh, the the tail end, so it's a, a slightly shorter, slightly shorter snare. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's actually a loop. Okay, so the next one, which is the uh, the body of the snare, um, is just a sample, um, and I've cut away the, uh, the the click part of that sample here. I just wanted the body, um, so I'll just solo that as well. And again, similarly, I've cut away the uh, the low end, the information that you don't need from the uh, from the snare, just so that the uh, it doesn't muddy up the mix. So together, uh, they sound like this. Okay, uh, moving down, we've got the bass group, uh, which is quite, there's quite a lot going on in here actually. Um, so we've got the pluck group, which is all of the meat and bones of the track. And these are all the plucky basses uh, that are put together. Um, so um, various things here. Uh, so I've got an omnisphere. I've oh, actually got three omnispheres, uh, all playing various things. Um, and uh, I, I got a, a resampled um, patch that I created on my Moog subsequent 37, uh, which is adding the, uh, the you know the, the, the lower mids um, and the uh, sort of the body of the uh, the bass. Um, so together they sound like this. Now, 
just looking at the processing on here. So the group, I have a glue compressor again, uh, slightly shorter attack this time because um, uh, I want it to take effect quicker. Um, threshold not as aggressive, but uh, a reasonable amount of makeup gain just to uh, to bring bring it all back up again. Um, some cutting around the 300 hertz range because that's where all the mud is in this particular uh, set of bases because uh, I've got quite a few going on at the same time so uh, they're all sort of mounting up here uh, and cut away all of the uh, the highs there because uh, for this these these bases I didn't need that information um, some alternated uh, auto filtering here just to cut some frequencies and help with transitions um, I use that quite sparingly but um, it's really just in places like the build here um, so you'll see I'm automating the, uh, the, the filter here just to uh, uh, as a, a low pass um, uh, just to um, uh, help build dramatics really um, so I go through each of the layers in turn um, so Omnisphere is, uh, these are all uh, patches from the, uh, the, the stock core library. Uh, so we've got Mogi Boogie, um, great name. Uh, so that sounds like this. And that's the upper mid bass. Um, so uh, you can see here, cut away all of the lows, um, highs again, um, and uh, just a slight boost at the 1K uh, area there. I've got an LFO tool here, which is obviously used for ducking. And I'm using a uh, delay plugin here as a stereo width plugin, uh, which is quite a useful tool. So adding about 10 milliseconds of, uh, of delay to get a stereo effect. The next one is the Moog. Um, so this is the resampled uh, bass. Um, and uh, basically I've cut away everything here, just the, uh, the, the lows here. Um, and this is the uh, the, the beef, beefy part of the bass. And it's a, obviously it's a mono synth, so that's a, a mono sound. I've got no additional processing on that. I uh, just wanted a nice clean bass sound from that. Um, the next layer is another Omnisphere. Um, so uh, we got another uh, stock patch, uh, mainframe bass. Um, and that is this. Okay, um, similar sort of processing, so rolled off the lows, a little bit of a boost at the up, uh, upper end, um, and I'm using an Echo, Echo Boy, which is another fantastic plugin from Sound Toys. Uh, and this is a delay plugin, uh, just using one of their um, their built-in patches there. Um, now the next one is uh, an arpeggiated bass. Um, so this is a sensory overblow from again from their core library. Um, so just solo and play that one. And again, just rolling off the low end there. Um, so we've got two bass hits. Um, so one of them is a sample. Um, so the way that I've done that is I've taken the forward sample and I've reversed it and just um, put them together. Um, processing wise, I've uh, got a uh, stereo width again, uh, a junior Echo Boy, which is just the, uh, the same thing as Echo Boy, but just with a simpler interface because I only need a very basic uh, delay on that one. Uh, and again, a slightly steeper um, uh, roll off, but uh, cutting the lows away. Um, and that sounds like this. Uh, then we've got another sample here, which is just a, uh, a, sl a small bass hit. Nice little techno y sort of sound there. Um, and then a, uh, a serum bass, which is from the Seven Skies uh, pack. I um, can't remember the name of it. Um, but uh, just a, a small sustained bass there, uh, again, just to add a, an extra an extra layer of ear candy for the uh, for the whole thing. And again, processing wise, just taking the lows off. I've added a, uh, a Valhalla shimmer uh, just to um, push it back in the mix a bit. Um, and uh, obviously LFO tool just to uh, to give it some rhythm, slightly less aggressively, but um, uh, it's just ducking against the kick in.
Okay, and collectively, uh, they sound like this. Okay, um, so moving on, uh, we've got the vocals. Um, so you can see uh, there's a number of tracks going on here. So uh, the, the reason I've done this, I've got slightly different processing on each of them. Uh, so overall, I've got a, a Manny Triple D, uh, which is actually just a, a comb filter, um, easily controlled, just three dials. Uh, so D Boxy helps you pull out the mud. Uh, D Harsher can take some of the, uh, the, the horrible uh, upper harsh frequencies away. Uh, the DSer is actually quite good for vocals, so um, it can get rid of some of the uh, the, the, the high um, uh, hissy sounds from uh, from from S's and things like that. Um, so quite light touch here. I just use the deboxy just to uh, take out some of the mud. Um, now the vocals themselves uh, came straight from the uh, the, the remix pack, um, so obviously they they're already very well processed. Um, but you can see that I've actually done quite quite some extensive processing on them myself And this is mainly just to help them fit in my particular track because uh, I've got a lot of um, uh, very synths going on uh, that share similar frequency ranges um, So just looking at this one uh, We've got the vocal here. So uh, this is the uh, the chorus um, So I've added a bit of a gain um, I've got an EQ here, which is quite aggressive uh, so a boost of the 1k, uh, which is where a lot of the body of the vocal in this particular sample is, um, and um, a boost up here just to bring out the um, the, 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 the S's here uh, and just help give it a bit more clarity. Um, I've got a roll off at the low end because I don't need any of this information down here, uh, and as you can see, it's all slightly boosted. Um, so I'll just play that for you now. Inspiring me, energizing me, she is sunshine. Okay, um, so I've also got a couple of returns here. So um, these are just extra reverbs that I'm sending off to these return channels here. Um, nothing particularly clever going on. So we've got um, D there, which is a... Um, a Valhalla reverb. I am using this uh, an another plugin from uh, Sound Toys called Crystallizer, uh, which is a really really neat tool uh, for adding some harmonics to uh, to the sound, uh, and it can come out with some really 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 interesting uh, effects. I use it sparingly um, because um, it can get out of control quite quickly, um, but uh, it, with with some light touch use, it can really really add, add some sparkle to uh, to a sound. And I really like it. It's um, you know it's it's fantastic. I'm I'm finding myself using it more and more on each track. Um, I tend to use it on a return channel because it gives me uh, greater control over it. Um, the next vocal we've got is the uh, one called Duck Me. Uh, now the reason I call it Duck Me is because uh, I'm actually using it as a sign chain source as well on uh, the leads later on. Um, but this is the uh, the main verse. Um, again, similar processing, so I've added uh, quite an aggressive EQ here, but I've rolled off more of the lows uh, because, again, the, they were sharing frequencies with some of the other synths and uh, the bass uh, in the rest of the track. Um, so I'll just uh, play that for you now. Like a fire in my soul It burns and on here I've got uh, a little bit of processing. So I've added some width again, uh, very, very slight. Uh, and I've got a, a Valhalla reverb, um, quite light touch actually, but just to give it a you know a bit more um, of a, a haunting sound to it and to push it slightly further back in the mix. Um, I've got another layer of vocals here, which is more of an effect than anything else. So I've used uh, a, a lot of reverb here uh, and delay to smear the sound. Um, and uh, basically the reason I wanted to do that, as I say, I, I wanted it to be more of an effect and uh, an additional layer. So if I um, scroll over here, you can see how I've used it. And it really does have a sort of a, a haunting feeling to it. So... Okay. 
okay and again these are just snippets from the main vocal this one's just a reverse part of it uh, and these are the uh, sections of the verse um, so if I just play that one okay uh, and the way I've done this is um, so basically I've added a, a bit of a gain uh, just to boost the vocal a bit um, the EQ is um, the less aggressive cuts, but similar sort of idea, boosting a lot of the highs there uh, and some of the, uh, the warmth from the vocal. Uh, I'm using a, uh, an, a, a H delay, which is a Waves plugin, uh, just for a simple ping pong, ping pong delay. Uh, and this is a one eighth uh, dot uh, uh, delay. Um, nothing particularly um, uh, difficult with that one. Um, I'm using uh, the Valhalla Shimmer again, uh, which is a, a shimmer v reverb, uh, and I use this a lot. It's a really, really great tool. Uh, another relatively inexpensive but incredible uh, uh, reverb tool. Uh, and as you can see, I've got the mix set quite high here um, to smear the vocal um, and uh, you know, cutting out the lows from the, uh, the from the reverb effect as well, because you don't need any of that. Um, but um, it's also got this neat uh, mode here where you can switch between mono and uh, various stereo settings um, and that, that really does um, sort of help give it presence as well. It's a really, really, really great tool, highly recommended. Um, I've got a, a, a side chain, well, an LFO tool here um, acting as a side chain, less to duck it for the kick but more to give it a bit more rhythm um, and just to keep it in, in line with the rest of the track. Uh, and an auto filter here, which I'm actually using just to uh, to cut off the highs. Um, you'll probably find that I, uh, I I swap and change between using an EQ for that and uh, and an auto filter. I don't know why it just happens to be one I reach for at the time, um, but they they both have the same effect. Uh, and finally, vocal wise, I've got a, uh, a sort of a rhythmic effect here. Uh, again, um, it's it's a cut from the main vocal, a very sh very short snippet. I've uh, got a delay on it, again a 1 8 dot, um, and uh, another Valhalla. Um, still quite quite uh, wet, but uh, not as aggressive as the uh, the, the other vocal. Uh, another LFO tool here, just to, uh, to to give it the rhythm and keep it out of the way of the, uh, the, the kick. Uh, and I'm using a little Autoboy, uh, which is a fantastic sound toys plugin for manipulating vocals. So I'm just using it to pitch it up and just change the form slightly. I'm also giving it a little drive, uh, which is actually just a bit more saturation, really, uh, again, to give it more grit, help it cut through. Uh, and the effect of that is uh, as follows. And again, uh, cutting off all of the lows and quite a bit of the, uh, the lower mids as well. So next we have the stems, and these are, again are stems that came straight from the remix pack. Uh, I didn't want to alter these too much because they are they're really really lovely lovely um, stems, uh, and I wanted to use these because they'll um, you know sort of ground the uh, the remix and uh, bring it in line with the original. Um, so uh, three three layers here, um, which are the three different samples that were provided to me. Um, no real processing going on other than to send it to a reverb channel, uh, which is uh, one of these return uh, channels here. So uh, I think it's this one. Um, so it's just a, a vintage verb here, a uh, little bit of compression uh, and rolling off the highs. And I've got an LFO tool here just to duck the effect. Uh, so I'll just play that. got the uh, main uh, breakdown um, bits here so um, yeah the these two um, um, samples from the remix pack were just too good not to use um, so um, we got the strings here from the uh, the original um, so I'll just solo that there I'm doing some volume automation just to bring it in there. And um, we've got the, the, the main orchestral style strings here, uh, which are, uh, you know, that really are the meat and bones of this, uh, this breakdown.
Okay, um, so yeah, like I say, not much processing on there. Uh, on the group, I just rolled off the lows. Uh, again, um, information I don't need. Um, and layers wise, I have got another base going on here. So I've got a drop base, um, sorry, a break base. Um, and uh, these are actually two layers from Serum. Um, and I'll just um, bring those up. Um, so uh, it's actually a base that I've used before, which is why I've got it in this this uh, this rack thing. Uh, quite a useful way of doing things, actually. You can actually group things together in a um, uh, in a rack uh, and uh, save it uh, essentially as a preset in Ableton. Uh, it's actually right a, a really really good way of doing things. Um, so if I go up here, um, you'll see that I've got a few that I've put together. And they're just the, uh, the the VST and all the effects all together in a in a rack that you can just drag into any project, um, and uh, and reuse the sample. Re sorry, reuse the sample or the sound or or whatever. Um, really, really good. Really, really good tool. Um, so these are just um, sustained bases. Um, this is one again from the Sunny Lux um, pack, but I've I've turned off Oscillator A. Uh, and uh, and just use this 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 one of these wavetables that he's provided, and it's got a sawtooth sub, a um, bit of saturation, um, and uh, cut off all of the, uh, the top end, just a roll off of the uh, the lows as well because uh, I don't need that information in here, uh, just solo that. And then I've got another layer here, which is again um, all rolled off at the top end, same amount of drive. Um, and this is pretty much it's, it's a, a restart sound, um, but um, just a pair of um, saw waves, basically. Um, a really, really straightforward sound. Um, there's a bit of distortion on there, uh, some compression, light compression, and I'm using the uh, the hyper plug in here just to uh, to give it a bit of width. Uh, and to tune it slightly, so it's uh, four four steps of unison, um, and that sounds like this. And together, It's just a really, really warm low end for the uh, for, for the um, uh, the break. Okay, so uh, next we have a noise channel, uh, and basically I'm using this as a mixing trick. Um, so it's basically uh, just to add some extra information at the top end, um, some harmon harmonics all the way up this this top end of the frequency. It's a neat trick. Um, it tricks your ears into thinking that there's there's more going on there. Um, and uh, if I were to solo it, it it's nothing special um, so if you listen here it's just a, uh, a side chain noise and if I take away the EQ you can hear precisely what it is And yeah, it, it, I use this quite this trick quite frequently in in most of my tracks, especially in the drops. Um, it, it really gives that extra bit of energy uh, to the uh, to the track. Um, and um, although it's almost imperceptible, it, it is there, uh, and it really, really is quite a useful useful trick. Um, something that I was shown um, some time ago actually by one of my producer friends. Um, so moving on, we've got the effects. Um, so these are your various swooshes, risers, drops, um, uh, fills, etc. Uh, and uh, drum rolls, that sort of stuff. So these are all um, effects that have come from various sample packs. Um, and um, yeah, it's typical sort of stuff. Um, so uh, just to add ear candy, um, you'll see that I've rolled off. Um, I've done it. Uh, so I've rolled off most of the lows here. Uh, this is all information that I don't need uh, in the track, and it just muddies up the mix. Um, so let's just that. I do want to make that roll off as well. Um, 
okay and these are just your various crashes um, and sweepers uh, not really much uh, going on there's a bit of processing really uh, just to shape the sounds so this one for our, uh, for instance is a uh, uh, a riser um, that uh, I've changed to a, 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 a um, use both directions but I've taken off all of the uh, the low end and a fair bit of the high um, and similar things here so a uh, bit of a uh, bit of low end roll off there um, you know and so on and so forth so you know just bread and butter stuff um, that, that, that that you tend to find in most tracks to add ear candy um, and I've got another another set of effects uh, I don't know why I split these off I think I added these much later so that's why they're in a, di in a different group but again they are just sweepers risers and effects so I'll just silo those Okay, so onto the plucks and leads. Um, so there's more going on here. Um, so there's three layers to this uh, to this one, and this uh, this is basically for the intro, a bit of ear candy for the intro, um, the um, uh, the main pluck for the break, uh, and also in the outro. Um, so I've done a bit of um, filter automation here. Uh, and um, what else have I got? Um, so I've got a glue compressor um, using to, uh, to to glue the three uh, layers together. Um, an auto filter, as you can see here, which I'm automating just to uh, to the root, uh, to um, bring out the frequency slowly, uh, just to help fade it out uh, between each hit. Um, I've got a uh, Valhalla shimmer uh, light touch here, but just to uh, to, to uh, gel it all together a bit. Uh, another EQ, uh, again rolling off the lows, uh, a track spacer which I'm ducking against the vocals, and that's all the vocals, so the vocal group, um, and I'm just using that to remove the uh, the vocal frequencies from the pluck frequencies here, um, just to help sidechain it away, uh, and uh, an actual sidechain here, um, which is uh, to duck it away from the kick. Uh, these are three spire layers. Uh, so we've got this one, which is a preset from a Sunny Lux pack, um, where I've just fiddled with the uh, sustain here and taken uh, change it to a full sustain rather than a decay. Um, but not much else. Uh, I've got another one here, which is from Spire, which uh, I've got a, uh, a stereo width um, delay going on here. Uh, and this is a Myon preset. Um, so uh, another another pack that I've downloaded. Um, it's quite good to use some of these presets. They're, they're well crafted, so it's it's nice to just be able to drop something in and have it work. Um, and uh, uh, finally, another spire, uh, which is another my own preset. Um, and um, yeah, again, it's another plucky sort of sound. I may have fiddled with this one slightly, uh, but probably just to play with the modulation. Um, so these sound like this. And you can hear the automation just taking down, uh, low passing the uh, the whole thing. Uh, in the break, I'm only using layers B and C. Uh, the reason being is there was too much body to uh, the first layer, uh, and it was muddying things up. Um, so I have got and have used uh, the, um, uh, the the MIDI from the uh, the remix pack here, but just changed it ever so slightly. Um, so I'll just solo these off, and you'll be able to hear. Okay, so similar pattern, um, and uh, again, just in keeping with the original track, um, just uh, change the synths really, just to um, make it my own, put my own stamp on it. Uh, and then the uh, we've got the main uh, riff for the drop, which is very different. Um, so I wanted to go a bit more sort of classic -y trance here. Um, so this is uh, an arpeggiated riff, um, so nothing overly complicated. Uh, just that really um, and um, basically this is two layers uh, so if I play these together you'll hear what's going on uh. 
So processing wise, I've got a Decapitator, which is a saturation plugin from Sound Toys. Um, I'm using this to add a bit of grit, uh, so just driving it ever so slightly uh, on the P setting. Um, and that just uh, it gives it more bite uh, uh, and um, attenuates the high end. Uh, I'm using quite an aggressive EQ here, boosted at 9, uh, nine kilohertz, um, just to, uh, to give it more presence and really help it cut through. Uh, obviously I've rolled off a lot of the low ends and I've got a slight cut actually at the, uh, the, the, the lower mids as well. Um, slight boost here uh, around the uh, one and a half k, uh, just to, uh, to to bring out the uh, the body of each of those uh, those layers. Uh, Valhalla uh, again, just to uh, gel the two together. Uh, obviously, a LFO tool here acting as a side chain. Uh, got an automated auto filter again, uh, using this just to uh, build up uh, into the uh, into the drop from the uh, from the break. Uh, and a filter freak, uh, which is another really cool sound toys plugin. Uh, really highly rate all these. Um, so this is just one of the presets, uh, but it's quite a neat effect. Um, so I'll just I'll just play that for you here, and you can hear what it's doing. Um, bring that on. Uh, obviously, I've automated it on and off because I don't want it on all the time. So it's subtle, um, but it's uh, it just um, changes things up, so it uh, keeps things interesting. Um, and here is a track spacer against the uh, vocal that I mentioned earlier. So this is the Duck Me uh, vocal. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I have created in the drop a couple of cuts of the main vocal, uh, which is a slight deviation from the original. Um, and I wanted those to really punch through. Um, and uh, all I've done here, really, basically, is uh, is taken the the, the snippets um, like this uh, and uh, sunshine and done that in essence in human form. Um, so what I've done with the uh, the, the, the duck me um, uh, track spacer down here is just ducked the uh, the, the uh, frequencies away from the leads as those vocals hit, uh, just to give the vocals more space in the mix. Um, layers wise, uh, so this is uh, quite straightforward. I've uh, got a couple. I've uh, got a, a spire here, which is again uh, a preset. Now I think this is from uh, Protoculture um, uh, pack actually. Uh, really, really, really nice lead. Uh, I've fettled it ever so slightly with the modulation uh, and changed a bit with the, um, you know, some of the effects over here, but nothing, nothing overly complex. So taking out the reverb, that sort of stuff, uh, just to dry it up. Um, processing wise, uh, just taken off the lows and added some width. Um, so And the second layer is very simple. Uh, this is actually just a single sawtooth, um, and uh, it's it really is that's that's all it is. Uh, it's just adding some body to the uh, to, to the um, uh, to the arp. So if I solo that and play that, no processing at all except for this EQ, which is just boosting the uh, the, the, the body of that particular sound. And finally, uh, we have this pad, uh, which is only used once throughout the entire thing. Um, and uh, this is just uh, to, uh, to to bring the, uh, the the peak up another level. Um, so if I solo that. So again, it's another serum. Um, it's a preset uh, from the Sunny Lux pack. Um, I haven't changed this one at all because it's, it's it's just a, is just lovely. Um, and uh, processing wise, I have added the LFO for sidechain. I've got the Duck Me here um, uh, track spacer again to uh, to give the vocals some space. A uh, bit of bit of width here. Uh, and obviously rolled off all of the low end um, just to keep the uh, the, the, the uh, mud away from the uh, the mix. Um, and finally, uh, on the master channel, I have got a couple of effects here. Um, so 
most of it's turned off uh, I don't tend to use a lot on here uh, but I did come across this uh, free plugin uh, and this is really really cool uh, so this is a, uh, a plugin that adds harmonics uh, at um, you know in, in your track and I, it's used really to boost the lower harmonics uh, and it can be really effective at really fattening up the uh, the, the lows in your track uh, without overdoing it um, so basically, like I say, it's a free plugin. Uh, it's called Bark of Dog. Uh, it's from a company called Boz Digital Labs. Uh, and um, the way it works, you, you effectively dial in a, a frequency range here and then boost it. Uh, and it'll add harmonics to that, that range. Used sparingly, uh, it's a really effective tool. Uh, it's something that um, I, I wouldn't overuse. Uh, but essentially the way to use it is you uh, boost it right up here somewhere, play around with the frequency here until you dialed it in and it sounds sounds good, and then drop the boost back down somewhere to around 6 is usually enough, uh, sometimes a bit lighter. Um, and um, it can really, really fatten up the uh, the, the overall sound. Um, so highly recommended. Um, something that was provided, um, uh, suggested to me from a uh, an online blog resource, I think, actually. So really, really cool. Uh, and finally, I've got this uh, uh, tool here, which is something that Darren Tate recommended. Uh, and this is from a company called Mastering the Mix. Uh, and it's a uh, essentially it's an EQ. Um, so uh, basically uh, what you can do, you can select a preset here, uh, which are a set of presets that have actually been um, uh, curated by the team who wrote it. Uh, and uh, they're, they're almost, they're, they're basically um, uh, suggested presets or suggested settings uh, for each of these different genres of music. Um, and what it'll do once you, uh, once you play your music, it'll assess it based on that, uh, that, that preset and then give you suggestions as to where you should push things back. Um, so you can see here I've actually um, uh, taken back uh, the, uh, the, the, the low lows, um, dropped back some of the, uh, the, the, the um, 40 hertz range, uh, and ever so slightly around the 80s, um, just to take out some of the, you know, the, the, the really aggressive low end uh, from your mix that you just won't, you won't hear on many speakers and on larger systems. Uh, would just serve to, uh, to, to to muddy the mix. So a really cool tool, uh, again relatively inexpensive uh, and uh, available from Plugin Boutique. Um, and that's about it really. So um, you know the, the the end result is uh, something a bit like this. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Um, thank you ever so much for uh, tuning in and uh, listening to me. Um, and um, yeah, this is uh, the remix, my remix for Sunshine in Human Form, which is out now on Mondo Records. Uh, you can grab it from uh, any uh, major outlets like Beatport, uh, iTunes, etc. And it's available for streaming, obviously, on all the major platforms. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.